Only though, looking from the first few bands, Kazakhs and the Blanc, very standard bands to go against both these mid laners. And it's interesting to see the blue team, Millennium, banning out that Kassadin. It's simply because Kerb, he doesn't play it. Kerb, we haven't seen him play Kassadin, we've never even heard about Kassadin from Kerb's side, so they have to ban away. And these teams, they know it, like Gambit know Kerb isn't playing it, so that's why Millennium has to ban away. Lulu not banned out so far, big smile on Alex's face, I don't think... I wonder if Kevin. I wonder if they're going to go straight for a first pick here, Millennium. Where they're going to use it? We saw Alliance doing it in the first game. Of course, they used it for their support, though. They used it for the support. That was smart. But we haven't actually seen much Lulu from Jiri or Kerb. It doesn't seem like his style of champion. So I'm not sure if Millennium want to go for it or they want to maybe early pick an AD carry. Lucian, for instance, would be open here with Kaden banned away, and then you force also Genji to go into the Jinx, and then you can put some hard engage onto him, maybe lock him down. Could be leaving the Annie open as well, don't forget. Edward will almost certainly lock it up. Elise in there has been the first pick once again. Always one of those go-to first champions. It's simply just an overall strong jungle in every single aspect. It works in every single combo. And you don't show your tactic when you pick this Elise. Smart enough, take it away also from Diamond and see if you can then shut him down by finding him with this Elise in the 1v1 or 2v2 scenarios. And this really does leave a lot of choices open for Gambit. Like we said, the Annie in there for Edward. You remember that three-man, four-man Tibbers he used in that? Baron pit. A lot of choices available for Gambit. We have AD Chaos like Lucian open for Genjev. We have the Lulu mid open for Alex if he wants to play. We have the Warwick Renekton open for someone like Darian. Dr. Mundo obviously still left open. There are so many picks and I don't even think Gambit worries too much about this at least because look at all the junglers open. Pantheon there, we have Wukong Olaf jungle, we have something like a Lee Sin jungle. There's many options for them. Looks like it may well be that duo lane for Genja and Edward. Of course, they weren't playing together last week, so this will be Synergy having to be refound. He was alongside Fury last weekend. Of course, they went one and one with Edward, the only member from Gambit. But it is going to be Annie and Lucian in the bottom. And that's such a perfect combo for Gambit because they want to have this Lucian so they don't rely on the positioning from Genji with the Jinx or Varus. So now he has Lucian. Overall, very strong pick. Good against pretty much everything in lane. You have the long range poke from Annie. A lot of damage. We saw him raided on it last game how strong Annie is. If you land at tables on multiple people, the damage you have early mid game as well. So, very good combo for Gambit. And it should signal that they, don't, they want to make sure they win this bot lane. Well, we're waiting to see what Millennium are going to go with. It will be the Leona, standard counter against the Annie these days, and the Sivir, so they really are countering Gamma's pick so far. It works as long as Leona can actually get onto Annie, because Annie, she has the long range, she has a good poke from distance, you can keep Leona away in the early stages of the game. Also, you have Lucian, who will outrange the Sivir, so it's actually a very risky lane for Millennium early on, but once they deliver 6 mark, you can pop the ultimate from Sivir with Elise there, land their stun from the owner and then you can engage in with your jungler and you can easily turn around for a kill or generally when you get to team fights the amount of engage you can do with Elise and Sivir, I mean uh, Leona sorry and Sivir ultimate it is insane how fast your team can get in there what will Alex Hitch go with? Will it we see that Lulu that he favoured so heavily for that mid lane? Obviously Millennium have some sort of counter prepared for this LeBlanc was banned out which we saw Kurt running so heavily there is the Lulu being hovered over, and there could be the Evelyn for Diamond. And I really, really love this Lulu pick, because look at all the hard engage. Oh, I absolutely love Swain. I'm just going to put it out. I really, really love Swain. <laughs> Locked it in. Oh, the first Swain, I believe, of the European LCS. And I don't even recall seeing it in North America yet, along with, of course, Lee Sin for Aaron A. So it's going to be at least top lane for Kevin. We're going to have Lee Sin jungle against this Evelyn. He want to be able to spot her out, find her, Take some fights with her, maybe counter gank a oh. bit. But this Swain pick up <laughs> against Lulu. Swain is a very strong champion as long as he's not against like an assassin type that can get into his face and burst him down. Because the sustain you have with Swain, the sustain damage you have, if he's against somebody like Lulu who can't burst him down, he might even be able to win the fights 1v1 and actually do really well against her. Please, God, don't let it be Yorick <laughs> in, the, in the top lane. We'll see what Darian's going to go with. This will be up against an Elise. What would you run against an Elise? Against an Elise, something like Renekton should work fine. Shivana will have a few issues early on, but then she will outscale Elise very, very hard. And also Elise has very little amount of split push. Aatrox, that's a champion Darren played a lot to great success in the summer. And it's a very early game aggression champion. He has a lot of damage early on. He can dual release, try and shut her down early. And also, even if he should get killed, he has his passive to revive back up. And yeah, this is a Darren champion. You have your jump to escape. You can push really, really hard. You have some decent wave clear. And also, you can just do this all in split pushing constantly. And even though you get caught out, it takes a lot of time to kill you. So the rest of your team can do something else. So two very 
different comps coming out from Millennium versus Gambit here. Clearly both of these teams have been working on what are they going to do to counter one another in this game. And both these combos share the same thing with very good engage. You have the Le Le Leona ultimate and you pop the Sevi ultimate and you just go straight into the face of Gambit. On the other side you have the Tibbers, you have Evelyn coming in from the side, popping her ultimate. You have Aatrox jumping in there, getting the Lulu ultimate to knock people up. So there are so many options for both teams to start fights. And also, both teams are so tanky. Killing a Swain is very, very hard. Killing a Lulu is also very, very hard. So pretty much every single member of the team, of the team except for maybe eight carries, actually very hard to kill. And of course, remember we are on 4.2 this week. The picks and bans are in, so let's check out your votes for this game. LOLesports.com is where you've been. And you have voted 87% in favor of Gambit. We'd also like to remind you that you can join us here in the studio to watch these games live. Just head over to LOLesports.com, click on tickets for all of the details. Tickets are now available for the next three to four weeks, I believe. I believe so as well. Yeah. And looking at the votings for this one, 87% on Gambit. They are the favorites, of course. But we still need to see more consistent play from Gambit. So I think it's a little bit, little, let's say 60% in my opinion, actually. You think? Okay, we'll see how this one works out. Remember Millennium? They've been going one-on-one -on -one quite yeah. a lot. Gambit themselves, Gambit in pajamas last week, of course. They had a lot of substitutes standing in because of those Russian visa issues. But that does also mean that Gambit have had a lot of time to practice together. Let's see what team turns up today as we head into the game. Millennium starting out as the blue team. And they are, of course, up against Gambit as the red team from top to bottom. So, what will we see from level one? Looking lane-wise, very early on, Bodlin from Gambit should have the advantage with the very long-range poke they have. The mid lane, Lulu should be able to poke out Swain. He's a bit of a slow starter, he needs a few levels and his ultimate to really start doing his 1v1. And notice here, Millennium actually want to go aggressive in. Maybe just want to go in and try and catch someone out or get a D-board later on to spot where Evelyn starts. Millennium, of course, they are one of the few teams that do go for those big five-man invades. And they seem to be setting up for this one. They are going to see Genja off at the side there, but I think he will have caught vision of them all as well, which means Millennium will step away. Of course, there's wards not off cooldown on the trinkets yet, so haven't been able to place any wards just yet. It would be the smart thing for Millennium, though, if they really want to spot out Evelyn, to get in and get a ward around the Wraith camp or maybe the Wolf camp or the blue buff, because the way you spot Evelyn is by having wards on the camp, so you see her clear them, because that's where she pops out of stealth. Otherwise, she's just going to walk around, you won't really notice her. Like here, Amnir is actually going to spot him. Well, he gets a little bit of a heat spike on towards our nade. Starts off the first scratch of the nails. We're not too worried about that one. So we really need to pay attention also to this top lane. You have the Dawn's Ring Elise, very aggressive early start, a lot of early game damage. And also you have the Aatrox. We know how good he is, how much damage he can do early on. We also know how risky it is because you kind of have to all in. You need to jump in with him. If the enemy jungler is there, you will, be, you will be punished because that is your jump. You need to use it to get into the face of Elise and actually really get some damage onto her. As it stands, it looks like it's going to be a red buff start for both junglers. We do see Ona, he's down the bottom. No help, though, from his bottom lane. So it tells me that Creaton and Jayree, they want to get the jump on Genja and Edward. They want to get the level two first. Yeah, they simply want to make sure that they're not getting pressured out early on, because with Leona, if you do get pressured out early, there's no way to come back before you get some levels, and there's a lot of CS you're going to lose. So they want to make sure that we're there early to push the wave. And you see Gambit straight away. They're just taking full control of the lane with the range. Oh, Edward has built up that stun, lands in on towards Creaton. Jerry somehow sidestepped it. It looked like it was going to land on him, but he didn't get stunned up. But it, instead, it will be looking like level two for Gambit first. They will be getting it first. So you see Millennium already backing off. They want to make sure they're not being caught out in the lane. Once the level two hits for Gambit's side, so they both flash away or maybe even just dying. Smart enough. Back to top lane though. Kevin very aggressive early on. Darren has already been pulled down a little bit. So who do we give this lane to? Because this is not a lane we are used to seeing. You know, that we haven't seen an Elise versus Aatrox probably since the summer of 2013. I do recall Elise being fairly popular by the likes of Soaz. He had a crazy stat. Win stats like 87% on him. Very early on, I will give it to Elise. She has very high damage in the early stages. Also, the fact she has to execute, because Darren, he will go low when he uses his ability, so with his the execute onto the spider form Q from Kevin, it's a lot of extra damage onto Darian. You see Aaron here, he's already up here in top lane. He might want to kill Darian early on. Poison coming down, it has got Cocoon available, maybe he's going to throw it out. It will not quite catch Darian, just jumping away from that one early. And that was the jump we talked about from Aatrox. It makes him escape really easily. It's also very good for him to engage with, but that's the risky part. So smart for him, he didn't use it here, he just waited with it, jumped back to a turret whenever, oh, when he saw Aaron here. Well. 
potential counter coming out from Diamond. I think he's just going to go straight for the golems, though. He knows that Arane is off in the top lane, which means he's going to get straight in towards Arane's jungle and take away those golems' gold. And he stays around his bot lane in case something should happen. Arane, though, he's very far away. He's going to go for the rave, so it will be very, very risky to dive this one, and I think Diamond will just back off. But Diamond's been spotted out there. Jay Ree's going to go in because the Zenith played on towards Edward. Edward happy to turn it back around, put the stun on Jay Ree. But Diamond didn't want a part of that. He's just going to walk off and go for more farming. And look how well Gambit is using again this early game power they have with any illusion. They simply try and zone away Sivir from all the CS. Creton is always fairly low on mana, so he won't be able to use his Q too often to actually see us with. So Gambit is doing a nice job of simply trying to keep him down. Creton popping that spell shield. A little bit early there, Eddie had only just simply used a basic attack. Aaron here, now rotating down towards his bottom lane. Let's see if he's going to go and dress. There is a ward in the in the tribal drop here, so they will spot him if he tries to run around. So he actually relies on Jerry to land his, his uh, stun, and then he jumped safeguards into him and he started. But no, he backs away. I wonder if they're going to try and bait this one. You can see Ed Diamond moving into position here, and purposely Gendra and Edward are sticking around. They're purposely trying to bait it in, but Arane is not taking that bait and he's heading for the mid. It's so smart what Diamond is actually doing on Evelyn because you can stand in the middle of the lane and you will not be noticed by the minions. So it's very easy for him to get in for the counter gank if Arane is there. They did see him back off though, so Diamond was just there for safety. And now he's wise enough backing off, gonna go shop and then continue his farming. Of course, these are two junglers that really excel at trying to find kills, trying to be aggressive. We'll see whether that over-aggression gets punished by either team so far. This mid lane, we haven't seen a great deal of it right now. It is Kerb up against Alex Hitch, which is Lulu versus Swain. And the good thing for Kerb is, as long as he can keep almost even in farm, get the farm he needs early on, build up the Rod of Ages early, and then go into more damage items like maybe Sonyas or Deathcap, go that route, he will be strong when he gets to team fights. He just needs to make sure he can get all the farm here in the lane and not give up any kills for Alex. Alex Hitch keeping fear on that bottom lane, just stepping into the bush. Making a little bit of insecurity, and look at that, they pinged on towards the bush. They're assuming that Alex actually just put a ward in there. Clever play from Alex, maybe trying to bait out Aranea to go towards the top, where he wants to put that ward. Yeah, it's actually very smart. If you can get on us, oh, snare hitting from Kerb. Does get the snare down, doesn't really do a great deal of damage. That bird, of course, taking away the damage from Kerb, just keeping the tick on towards him. Aranea is going in towards the top lane, but we can see Darian is already backing off. And we're actually back to the middle lane there. We had the snare coming in from Kerb. The general combo you want to do, if you can, is eat them first, then you apply your Q, which slows them, and then you snare them afterwards to get the full damage. Because your E will increase damage taken by the rest of your abilities. So if he can manage to land that, he will actually do quite a lot of damage onto Alex. But he has the shield and his ultimate, so it's going to be very hard for Kerb to actually kill him. Yeah, of course, he is maxing out Torment, which is that E. So that's what Kerb's going for right now. Put three points into it. Meanwhile, of course, Alex Hitch lingering around this middle lane. You can see Kerb there using his Scarecrow form to just farm out that wave. And if there is a big wave there, it's dangerous times for Alex Hitch. He does not want to engage when that's happening. No, it was smart by him because he knew if he moved forward, Kerb would try and land the snare and then Aranea could come in from the side potentially. But also, look at how well Kerb is actually keeping his mana. Because every time he gets a minion kill, he gets mana from his passive. And he's been using it really well. Alex has been using a lot of mana and trying to harass him early on. It's implemented now. He can't harass him anymore. Well, we saw Diamond taking away the large wraith again. He's Heading on down, no early aggression from either team. They may be learning from previous sessions, but Diamond now is going to come around to Kerb. And we are going to see Alexis going, no mana on Alexis, can't go for it. Exactly, no mana, they can't go for it. Down in the bot lane though, some aggression. Jerry, he tries to go in, get some poke down and then back off. It's very smart play by him, especially because Kreaton is fairly low in the background. So as long as they hit Jerry, it's okay for the bot lane. Getting close to level 6 here, these two bottom laners, so as soon as those ultimates come out, we may well see Edward going for that flash. Tibbers, both are available. Creaton just getting poked low enough. He has got on the hunt coming up in a few moments to try and get out of there along with the solar flare of Jay Reed, but could be a hard engage coming out from Gambit. So back to the top lane though, which we talked about earlier on who would win early. Darren is actually doing a well, very nice job with his farming. He's gone back, picked up a Vampire Acceptor, so he has more sustain. And Kevin is actually more or less forced to stay away and try and see us from, from a distance, while Darren, he's just farming away. So he's actually winning this lane at the moment. He's a very good job, and once he starts getting that farm going, he's going to be happy building up that blood well that he gets on Darian. A lot of champions in positions we are not used to seeing. Of course, Darian was played by... Uh, Darian wasn't played. <laughs> <laughs> Aatrox was played by Freddy last week. Maybe he was in disguise. I don't know. Englishman was a Russian. Who knows? The Swank Lord maybe could make an appearance. It looks like they're going to go aggressive, though. The blood well, of course, is available for Darian, and it may well be required. He is going to get taken down. Did pop his ultimate. Kevin ready and waiting to try and go back on for this one. 
has to step away. It was a very nice play by Kevin, showing the all-in potential is in his favor against Darian. He popped the ultimate from Darian's side, but it wasn't enough to actually take down Kevin. So now he popped the passive. It means that if Ernia decides to come up there, they can easily dive him or generally just pick up a kill. Oh, both blue bobs were picked up by the mid laners. We do see aggression on towards Grey. It's on Flash Timbers. What's on it enough? The Ignite is running. One more tick should take him down. It's Edward with first blood yet again. And just as you mentioned earlier, once the Timbers was there from Edward, he could just pop it into the face of Kreaton. They've done such a good job keeping him low or keeping around the face to send mark for the entire laning phase. And there was nothing Millennium could do to actually hit it back. So just overall very nice play, waiting for level 6, then went all in for it, Ignite, Tibbos, everything, and he didn't spell Shield it. Big wave pushed in, but Kerb should be able to clear that one out, Pops it into Bird Firm, and takes down all those minions. Tries to use the Never Move, and Xeech not going to get caught out with that one. Both blue buffs on these mid laners now, and both have been back to buy. You can see Rod of Age is almost completed by Kerb, meanwhile the Athenes and Holy Grail for Alex Hitch. And it's actually very, very big for Kerb, the fact he's getting his Rod of Ages so early because he's gotten the farm he needs in the lane. Next time he backs off, he will be able to complete it and then stack it up. And actually becoming a very strong item when you get it this early. So it's very nice for him. He's going to get him the mana he needs and he might be trying to go aggressive on Alex. Just try and go for it. Never move. Almost caught. Had to flash out of it. RNA did follow it through. And you can see Alex Hitch using that wild growth. Nearly got him down. The Ignite is running. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Darren trying to run away from this one, but Ed Diamond is going to come in towards Kevin. Kevin got no escape now. He's already repelled on this one. He will go down. Darren using the ultimate to finish him off. Great counter gang by Diamond. It was actually Darren who had pushed the lane all the way up to the turret. So Diamond expected Kevin to go for Darian, win the fight, so he was there, stuck me, stuck around, moved in once actually Kevin went aggressive and picked up the kill. Very nice play. That massacre being used perfectly by Darian. So winning out that lane, and that's no small feat up against Kevin, who we talked about, you know, the top KDA, the really by far leading member of the top lane. And that's even a big advantage for Gambit, the fact that he's winning on CS, but he actually didn't win one versus one. Oh, they're going on Edward. Zenith Blade on Edward, but I'm not too sure whether they're going to follow through on this one. Jerry does try and keep the pressure on towards him, and he happily just pops that molten shield and walks away. So again, it's issue for Kevin, the fact he can actually beat Darren 1v1, but he can't simply kill him though. Will we potentially see a fight? They're going in! Zenith Blade on Edward, Solar Flare's going to follow through this time, they will take him down! The kick from Aaron Air forces him straight back, Kraton gets the kill. And very nice use here of both Safeguard on the hunt and also Jiri to go in, land a CC, pick up the kill. This could potentially be a Dragon for Millennium, but Diamond is nearby. Will he try and stop this one? May try and sneak in on this. He has been spotted out there. Zenith Blade doesn't quite land. And Genja's doing a lot of work off the side. And that's going to force him away. The damage on Kreaton. Genja takes himself down. He's going to go on towards RNA now. We do see Kerb coming around the side. But Alex Hitch is going to head them off. He forces them away. Diamond's going to continue following. We do see Never Move landing on Alex Hitch. But Kerb could be the focus target now. Diamond coming around one side. Genja on the other. The hate spikes landing through. Kerb has to flash away. Very, very big mistake by Millennium and Kreaton. Kreaton, he was tanking the Dragon while the rest of Millennium were moving away. So he got so low that Genya could come in from the side to, with Diamond, pick up an easy kill and then chase them down. And the damage from Kerb, we just saw it here, is not where it should be yet. He needs some items first. Big wave being pushed up by Kevin. Darian was off at the side there taking down the Golems. He's just going to farm out. Hasn't got that Bloodwell available yet. Uses the ultimate already. Kevin may be able to take him down here. Repels away. The Ignite does the job. Walks away like a boss. Again, he's behind in CS, but he's still actually winning the lane just by the fact he can constantly go on to Darien and try and pick up a kill. This was again due to the fact he took the passive from Darien early on, that he simply just dive him. He had the Ignite ready, just went straight on him, and we saw the execute on Spider Form Q, how good it is versus someone like Aatrox, who's always low on his HP. And that haunting guy is completely easy. Starting to look a lot more focused in that top lane, of course. We did see Darian go back and get that Negatron Cloak, so he's trying to counter it as best he can, but as you just saw, not really working out so well for Darian just yet. He did, of course, get that kill with the help of Diamond earlier on. That was important for him, but just the fact that you can actually get dived 1v1, and there's no risk of even Kevin dying, that is a big issue, because he will keep doing this, he will keep trying to do it. It means Diamond has to put more attention on top lane, and less on maybe mid or bot lane. And we saw if Aonir can come down bot again with the ultimate from the owner to start the fight, they should be able to pick up some more kills while Diamond is stuck in the top lane trying to help out Darian. We're seeing these two mid laners, they've been farming pretty well. We do see actually Alex Hitch is ahead by around about 10 CS because they did get try and force Kerb out of lane earlier. But, but how are they going to transition? How is it going to work? We're up to level 10 now. Once we start getting into that team fight phase, who is the better to have on your team? Both actually have their own kind of role. You have the more utility-based Lulu, who's going to help out the rest of the team, speed them up, slow the enemy team down. 
Gonna have some decent damage. Same actually goes to Swain. He has decent damage as well. He's never gonna hit the point where he just destroys someone, like one-shots them. But he's gonna be very tanky, very hard to deal with. I expect him to also pick up a Sonya, so he's gonna be even more hard to kill. And Jerry going aggressive in bot. Edward caught out once again. Solo player this time used. Diamond does come in down, but he wasn't there close enough. We can see RNA just walking away from this one. They could do nothing to stop Edward going down yet again. And once again, the combo from Millennium with Leona and with the Lee Sin. Pop down the ultimate from Leona, CC a target, he saves Guts in, and he picks up an easy kill. And this is what, you know, we talked about, the fact that once they hit that level 6, level 7, it is full engage from Jerry. He's just farming Edward right now. And that's actually what he's doing, they're going on Genja now. Well, Zenith Blade call on Genja, and he doesn't panic too much, and instead just turns around and keeps those double attacks going from Lucian. But Millennium is doing what they should do with this lane. Yes, they knew they would lose early on, but they just waited for level 6 before Anir actually showed there for the real gank. And as soon as they were level 6, they just started ganking it. They can keep doing this because next time around, if Edward flashes the ultimate, you just wait for it to be ready again from Leona and you just do the same. Again and again, there's no chance for Gambit to actually stop it. Speaking of doing the same, Kevin is putting more pressure back onto Darren. Has got his blood well available now, but I think we're starting to see Kevin start to dominate this lane. You can see that tower taking a lot of damage. Darren constantly going away. Kerp in the mid lane, he's taking pressure from Alex H. You can see, keeping that glitter lance going, keeping that pick. Running on towards him, never move, is going to get used off, but Alex Sitch is dominating this lane now. And the blue buff from Alex means he can just spam out his Q all the time onto Kerb, and Kerb can't really get to him because it's very hard to land in Nevermore from max range. So it's easy for Alex to just stay back, constantly poke him, shove the wave down. Kerb is still doing a fairly good job farming, especially also on the tower, and he also has his Rod of Ages, which is his key item early on. Sweet defense from Eddie. Gonna take down that dragon. Kid just starts it off. I don't think Edward really fancied tanking that dragon there. He wasn't too happy with his AD carry, but they will start trying to take it down. Aranea has managed to land that sonic wave. Don't, don't think he landed it on towards him. Has to safeguard in, and now he's in trouble. Solar flare comes down from JB, but he's gonna have to try and back away from this one. Edward taking a lot of damage. Puts Timbers down on towards Ed. Aranea, Aranea has to safeguard away on towards that minion. But we see Alex is chasing in there. He's got nowhere oh. to go. Oh, catches the sonic wave on towards the golems and gets away like that. Nicely done. Diamond's still not done yet. He's looking to come around the bottom lane. We see Jerry very low. He could land those hate spikes. Goes in towards him. One more hate spike. The shield is on him. Diamond's going to try and finish him off here. He's going to get one more hit. The hate spike should land to land the rain. He does manage to flash towards it. Creates on all oh, the boomerang blade. He's going to come back. Lands damage on Diamond, but he gets away. Alex Stitch comes around the side. Picks him straight off. We didn't quite catch it on the corner there, but Creaton goes down. And that was such a nice chase by Gambit. Everything actually started when Millennium went in 3 versus 3 on the Dragon. And now Kerb being caught out. Darian going on towards Kerb. How is this one going to work out? Top laner versus mid laner. We do see Kerb. He's going to pop that ultimate. Can he try and get the life steal? The Ignite was running. He's going to be able to jump straight on towards him, Darian. Remember, Darian's got blood well. Alex Hitch comes in. Kerb is going down. Alex gets himself another. And Gambit is simply punishing Millennium every time they make a wrong move on the map. First of all, they they went in to try and stop the dragon free versus free, while Alex he had shoved the wave in mid lane all the way down to the turret, so he could roam, Kerb couldn't. That meant he could come in, join the fight from Gambit after they killed the dragon, chase them down, picked up two kills. Later on, Darren, he just abandoned his top lane turret because he knew he couldn't defend it, and he went down mid, and Kerb, he was pushing out the wave, caught out of position, and then Alex could just join in as well and pick up another kill. So the fact that Alex had the pressure in mid and were able to roam, and then Millennium was kind of a little bit too aggressive, they actually ended up losing a lot of kills and also the dragon. We'll see how the fact that Darian's not building tank whatsoever. He's going full aggression. Got that Ravenous Hydra already completed. Along with that Negatron Cloak he picked up uh, a long time ago. In terms of teams, what are we going to see? We're starting to get to that 5v5 stage, although Genja again... This is the most aggressive Genja I've seen in a long time, by the way. He really wants to get some kills. Like, he was probably mad not being here last week because he couldn't speak English properly. So he's here now. He wants his revenge. Picking up kills, being very aggressive in lane. Early blood first also, getting some good stacks on this one. Well, not early, but a blood first Going in towards the static shift for some more wave clear and also some more upfront burst. But what we can expect is most likely to Darren to try and stay in this top lane and push. That's why he has the Hydra to shove out the wave even faster. But Kevin, he will be able to hold him and also duel him early. Oh, duel him 1v1. Of course, we did have dragon control for him as well. Continuing to keep their dragon stats. I think that's what 42 dragons, I believe, they've taken. I think they're one of the league leaders in terms of taking dragons down, as opposed to what Fnatic's 21 it was before the start of the game. Crazy stuff. So Gambit really have great objective control. And now we're seeing potentially Darian. Well, he's actually off at the side, but it's going to be Lucian that they're focusing on on the hunt menu. Zenith Blade does land. Solo Flare's going to follow through. Genja taking solo. He's going to get dropped. It's Jay Reader picks up the kill. Meanwhile, Gambit, they were trying to make a play on Kerpin mid. So once again, we see the same gang 
in bot lane, same procedure, pops Sibi ultimate, Tiri goes in, lands the stun, and then Arany is there, helping ping up the kill. Meanwhile though, Kerb, he might be getting dive here. Kerb getting caught out, he's in trouble, he's not gonna get out of this one, it's gonna be Gambit with a revenge on that mid lane, and they may take themselves an inner turret while they lose the outer down the bottom. And this is the second time Darren is roaming from the top lane, and Kevin is staying top. He just shoved the wave all the way out while Darren, he was gone for a long time. They actually spotted him early on where he failed the first dive because Kevin flashed. I mean, uh, Kirby flashed. Kevin, he stayed top. He didn't even go down to try and help. So Kirby, he was left alone at the turret. Easy dive for Gambit. And all, all in all, what Darren has just been doing is just shove the wave, go down mid, try and set something up against Kirk. Kevin is going to try and catch out Genji here, but he is playing this very cautiously, staying well away from that corner edge. Doesn't want to get too close to the jungle. And he will just take down this minion wave. Kevin still laying in wait. Is he going to try and land that cocoon? Oh, oh Genji's going to walk around to it. Doesn't land the cocoon! Not even close. Genji was easily going to dash out of that one. Yeah, Kevin was hoping for him to actually go down to the golem so then he could catch him out, but he spotted him. Wisely enough, he just dashed the cocoon. No chance taken from Genji's side. Spider going to go in. Not going to happen. Genji gets the gold. They're going to just go back. Genji gets the gold again. Can't mess with it. AD carry when it turns the last hit in, they are kings of that game. So we have a Giants build now onto Kevin's side, so you want to build a bit more tangy, maybe for the team fights. You could potentially go for something like a Sunfire to be a bit more hard to kill, at least for someone like Genja. And it would be very smart with this very physical lineup as well, with both Aatrox and Genja doing a lot of damage in the fights. You know, talking about the kings of last hits, Genja is absolutely dominating Kraton in terms of farm right now. He's got a 50 CS lead, and this is a massive danger side for Millennium because Gambit, as we talked about, generally are not that strong in the lane phase. Yet, when we see Genja, the AD carry, who normally is off on his own farming, which he's kind of trying to do now, when he's ahead, he will be looking for kills. And that may well be what he's doing right now. And it seems also because they had this very strong early lane. We saw it when they just locked in Annie and Lucian as the first two picks. We knew they were going for win to win the lane. And we knew they, they wanted to win this one. And then later on, they want to have Genji in front, have some kills on him, and then be very, very strong in the teamfights. So they don't have to rely on him split pushing to get some farm later on. Alexic and Darian deep in enemy territory. Hey, Jamie's going to come in there, but Darian fancies this one. He's going to try and turn that damage back around. He will take away the red buff. He's going to try and walk away. Kraton wants to pop that blood well. He can just jump straight into the dragon pit. And that was such a Darian move. He did the red buff, he was more or less alone. Alex was nearby, but so far away. And they're catching out Kevin. Kevin in all sorts of trouble. Where's he gonna repel to? Has to flash away. The Glenlance is gonna come through. Nevermore finds through. Alex Hitch punts it in, tries to flash away, but he goes straight into the jaws of Kraton. And this combo from Millennium is so good at catching out targets. This time around, it was actually Kevin being caught. But due to his repel and then flash into the rest of his team, they could pop the ultimate from Kraton and just go in, pick up a kill, and potentially this mid turret. But they've got no minions. They have to tank it out, they should be able to take it down. There's the minion line coming in now, but it is a little late. You can see J. Reed will tank it through. They're going to keep pushing because looking at the top, looking at the bottom, we do see Genja and Darian continuing to farm. Darian is moving up here, he's still far away. Diamond is on the side, he wants to try and get a flank engage. And Edward is there with Tibbles and Flash. Gambit, they can go for this one when Darian is close by. Darian comes in, he's going to go head to head with the team, realizes he can't take four on one. Does try and back away. Diamond tries to get a little pick on towards J. Re. Steps off to the side. Darian continues to get chased. Oh, he's caught up by Aaron Air. Aaron Air doesn't have that kick available. And now they may try and turn this one. Diamond's coming in the side. Still doesn't have that ultimate available, though. So it would be a very aggressive move for him. But the dragon is up now, and Gambi want to make sure they don't give it for free to Millennium. They want this dragon again. They are so good at timing these and also setting up the right fights. But there's full vision in this dragon pit for Millennium, and there are five members. Will they potentially go for it, or it looks like they're just going to back off and try and steal it with Aranir? They're going to see if Aranir can go for it. He's waiting in the wings. He's got that ward there. No pink wards being spotted, so he has perfect timing on this one, Aranir. He's going to try and catch Diamond out. Not fast enough, didn't fancy it. No, didn't fancy it, wise enough by him. Don't want to give up a kill, he didn't have his flash either to get out again. He would have to rely on actually being able to get to the to the edge and then safeguard over. Well, rewards from Genja placing out. So, as you can see, it is a near 6,000 gold lead for Gambit. 4-4 four, four in turret, so all square so far in a turret in the mid lane down for Gambit. Meanwhile, of course, the mid lane also down for Millennium, so big open mid lane so far. And we'll have to see later on which defensive items the teams go for because both combos actually have very good amount of physical damage but also amount of magic damage. Millennium may be lacking a little bit due to only having Sivir, but also Lee Sin, he does provide some physical damage and Sivir itself will be fairly strong, will be able to ditch out some good damage. And on Gambit's side, you have Lulu, Evelyn and Annie with the magic damage and then you have the two, Lucian and, and Darian with their physical damage. So we need to see how Millennium actually wants to build defenses and also how Gambit will.
So is Genji going to go for a QSS here, Quicksilver Sash, to try and get out of those stuns, or will it be a ghost, uh, a Guardian Angel? I think a Guardian Angel will be the better for him, or maybe a Banshee to stop the ulti coming down from the owner. Simply what he can do is just stay far back when the engage actually happens from Millennium side and then join in as soon as all the, all the ultimates from the owner is gone, the hard CC is gone. Oh yeah, go Garden Angel in case you should be caught out, or simply go Banshee to block the ultimate. We'll see which way it develops as it stands. Darian's off on his own and it's a 3-1 split push which we've seen Rocket pretty much developing and the rest of the league starting to mimic throughout the season now. We can see Alexic along the top, Darian on the bottom, but Millennium, they're going to try and push that mid lane again. They want to just more or less force Gambit to move away from these lanes because they don't want to go duel them one by one. Genya, he's out of position here. Millennium could potentially try and shove this one up, but look at here. Darian coming in from the side again, Lulu on the other side. Gambit might fancy a fight. It's a big pincer move for Gambit. I'm not too sure if they want to make it. And they are going to slowly back away. Potential Baron opportunity for Millennium, but it would be suicidal, surely, with Gambit still with five members available. Darian and Kevin, meanwhile, in this mid lane, are going to get aggressive upon. Darian will just get away, but the Cocoon's going to land. The rest of Millennium coming in, but a quick calling coming out. The Garen has to flash away from that one. Genja now going to get caught out. He's going to run for it. Solar Flare lands. Millennium pounce, and Genja has to dash away from this one. Darian may well be the sacrificial lamb. He has got Bloodwell available. The rest of Gambit come in there. Diamond manages to land his ultimate across all the Millennium. And now Alex Hitch focuses on towards Kevin. Kevin goes down. Kerb running for his life. Nevermore. Not going to land in the right spot. And he has to flash away as well. Darian's going to jump straight in towards him. Doesn't manage to land the damage. Edward with Tibbers already down. But Gambit get themselves the kill. So they have such a long chase by Millennium. They pop the Sibyl ultimate. They pop the Unum ultimate. Alex, he wants more. Oh, great. Kraton's going to go down here. That's just going to be a pop from Alex. Hitch. sped himself up, and that is the bonus of Alulu. You have a massive speed buff. Darian, meanwhile, he's kiting Kerb, and the rest of Gambit are closing in towards him. Where are you going to go? Flash Timbers again. Not Flash Timbers, Flash Stun. Doesn't matter. Got excited. Kerb's going to go down. Nevertheless, who will it be that gets the kill? JV goes down the bottom as well. And that is three kills with no response for Gambit. So funny enough, it's actually Millennium who starts the whole chase. Pop the Sibi ultimate, pop the Leon ultimate onto, onto Genja who escapes, and then the rest of Gambit simply comes around, joins in for the fight. We saw Diamond flashing the wall, popping ultimate down to five members, starting everything for Gambit. And then they start chasing onto Millennium. And due to Lulu with the speed up, she managed to catch onto Creator and pick that kill. And Diamond he just stayed around. here now going in. Aranir <laughs> kicks Darian. I don't think he cares. He's just going to keep on hitting the turret. Quite happy to for take a hill. He will get caught by Kevin. He's going to go down. Darian's dead. It will be Creator on the picks up a kill, but they got themselves a next in a turret. Definitely worth it for Gambit. They got the turret and also Millennium is far, far away. They won't be able to go for something like Baron because Ooh. they're not in position at all. Edward, he will be caught out. Edward is in all sorts of trouble. The Repel will show him up there. He does manage to get the stun on Kevin. No, can he walk away from this one? He hasn't got Flash, remember? And Ed Kevin is going to catch on towards him. Dodge the Cocoon. No, not quite. And it's Creaton that gets himself a second on the hunt used by Creaton. Yeah, very nice again. Creaton comes in, popped the ultimate to get a kill. He's actually having four kills already. Yes, he died four times, but he still managed to pick up some good kills. Behind in farm, but he's going to get the items he needs. And if he can get that, Millennium still have a chance to win fights. While Millennium are chasing the kills here, I've got to pick out that Gambit, they're pushing the lanes. You can see the top lane again. It's been pushed in by Alex Hitch, and now they're coming in from the side. Diamond gets on towards Aaron Air. Jerry taking the culling in the backside. Solar Flare being used to lock Genja up, and the Nevermore landed. Alex Hitch finally coming around the side, but they haven't got the damage. Now they're going to try and turn this one around. Kevin running up that river. Aaron Air going to try and focus on towards him. But the three members of Gambit have forced Millennium away again. It's very messy engage actually from Gambit, but they're so far ahead, or at least they feel so far ahead, they can do these engages and force Millennium to back off. And the thing about pushing all the lanes, you have Lulu who goes one lane, very easy for you to push. We talked about the Hydros earlier from Darren. It means he's just going to go down to the one lane, constantly shove it out very, very fast. Look how fast he's clearing these waves. So he will always keep them pushed out, and then he can move to more towards the mid lane if something should happen. See which way Genja does go with that build, because at the moment he's gone for another BF sword. He wants to get that damage on there. Takes down the large Wraith. Millennium weren't sniffing him out, but it's Gain. It's Darian. Look at him all on his own, shoving that bottom. And the funny thing is, the last time these two, these two teams faced each other, it was the same thing they actually did. Where Gambit, they just decided not to go straight up for team fights unless they were in a perfect position for it. And just split pushed every single lane constantly, forcing Millennium to try and react and get into some bad fights. It, they have done the hunt and they wanted to start the fights, but they haven't been picking the right ones. Aaron Air would love nothing more than to secure a victory over Gamut. It's one of the bogey teams they consider. You saw him in the 
feature earlier on. But Gambit with that timing on the Dragon already. Alex is a long way away from this one. It could be a 5 on 4. Alex running down the river. He will be there fairly fast. Look how fast he's actually moving on the minimap with his with his W spinning up again. Yeah, he might be caught out. He's caught out, but straight away, wild growth used very early on by Alex Hitch, and they're going to turn this fight on towards Millennium. Push running them away. We do see the cocoon landing on Diamond. Millennium quick to disengage. And Dragon is up. Gambit is moving towards his S5. This can be a really, really big fight and a very game-changing fight. Millennium, they need to win this one. There's a lot of ultimates still available for both teams. Of course, that solar flare could be key, as well as the Tibbers. You can see just off at the side, Flash is now available. Tibbers is ready and waiting, locked and loaded for Edward. He's trying to get himself invisible just off at the side. He wants to land there. So well bunched up right now, Millennium. They have to be so careful of this ability going in there. Edward's going to bide his time. It is now available. Solar Flare goes in there, and he's still not going to use it. Does try and catch on towards it, but that's a kill for Darian. On towards Jerry. Creates on running on the hunt use, but Kerp has been singled out. It's Lulu getting himself a second kill for Alex Hitch. And Gambit played that one perfectly. And Millennium, they simply they cannot collapse onto Gambit. One guy goes in, two guys goes back, and it simply means it was too easy to more or less just kill Jerry. This little tip was up for Edward, he didn't have to use it. Ultimate from Alex, also ready, didn't use it at all in the fight. And it was just too easy for them because Millennium went in like one by one. Kirby didn't even join the fight, he just stayed out. Poppy's ultimate didn't hit anyone. It was simply too easy for Gambit to get the kill. And the thing, I mean, on the, uh, the Wild Growth was used obviously by Genja just before it on, onto Genja. So they knew that ultimate was down, yet Millennium were just so fearful of the Gambit lineup now and the, and the pressure they have. Of course, they're so far ahead, you can tell it's a 10,000 gold lead. They just didn't want to engage. And yeah, notice here, by the way, everyone's actually in a good position to land the Tibbers, but due to the fact that Millennium, they don't want to go in as the entire team here. Notice how Kirby's staying back up here in the corner. Jerry is actually the only one in the middle of the fight. Kevin, he didn't do anything. The entire team fight. Kirby popped the ultimate, and Arane was too low. He had to back off instantly. Too easy, simply, for Gambit to just pick up three kills and then the Baron. Just completely picking him off. Meanwhile, Kevin, he's got caught out here. Diamond's on him. You can see Alex is just at the bottom of your screen. He's going to come around. This jewel is lasting, but Darren's coming around. That is not a good sign when the jungler takes down the top laner. And it's more or less been the story here because Gambit is so far ahead that pretty much every member from Gambit can actually beat whoever is going against them from Millennium side. So it simply means they can just keep doing this play pushing. Yeah, the ultimate is still ready for everyone. Didn't even need to use that ultimate. Of course, he had the Baron buff on him, so. It's almost a suicidal engage by Kevin, but he felt he could have taken him down, but it turns out... No, Kevin, you are not that strong right now. Kerp, uh-oh, we thought he was going to go straight towards the bush of Alex Itch instead. It's Millennium warding out, going full defensive duty. And if you look at the items onto Millennium side, we do have the Sonyas onto Kerp, but he doesn't really have any damage. He needs to get in there, he needs to tank up a lot of damage, but he won't be able to deal the same amount back to Gambit. That's a big issue because they're going in here. And focusing in, but go! Oh, look at that! Darian catches four members there, quickly catching in. Solar Flare does a good job at stopping them though, and Gambit will get locked up. Look at Alex Hitch using that speed buff, trying to get in around the side. Kerp tries to force him away there, but the rest of Gambit are going to keep on moving. And they can push down this mid lane turret now if they can actually group up as a team. Genya, he's still up towards the top and he's moving down, joining in with the rest of Gambit. Tibbers is up if they want to start a fight. The movement of Alex is starting to become scarier on that Lulu, of course. He gets a bonus. All that ability power locks up to crazy movement speed. We could see some very fast play coming out. They're going to keep on pushing on towards this inhibitor turret. They have that Baron buff on them, remember, but it's a good poke from Millennium, kept in at bay. But it's also very good damage from Gamma actually onto this turret. Notice how Alex, he can just shield himself or Genji when they go in. Keep them fairly safe from the turret, get some good damage on it. And then da da Darian, he just walks straight in, hits the turret, jumps out. He's not even scared of anything. Well, now he's got that Guardian Angel on. He's quite happy. He's effectively got two lives, that Bloodwell, of course, and the Guardian Angel. There is going to be a lot to stop Darian. He's going to be a damaging monster. Again, good Nevermore this time around, but Darian again slam dunks on towards Millennium. And you'll see the rest of Gambit rushing through the team. Millennium just dropping like flies. The culling coming out there. But it was all about Alex Hitch and Darian just dunking on Millennium. And there's simply no damage from Millennium's side. They can do nothing against Gambit in this team fight because there's so many... Things they have to go through. Garden Angel, revive onto Darien. There's also the shield from Diamond's ultimate. There's the shield from Alex, his ultimate. Millennium don't have the damage to take them down. And Gambit knows this. And Diamond didn't even use his ulti in that last fight. It's only just come back available. Creighton, uh-oh! Alex Hitch trying to catch on towards him. Kevin does come around the corner though. Didn't quite get that last hit, Alex Hitch. Look at the very scary amount of damage Alex actually has. He has the three core items. Kevin might even go aggressive. What are you doing, Kevin? I don't think you can even take this fight. Alex Hitch quite happy to just Running around, Aranir maybe found himself a Genja, but he's got no support. 
So we have the Banshee complete onto Genja. It means it's gonna be even harder to lock him up. No matter what you throw at him, you need to pop the Banshee first, otherwise you won't get to him. And even, even if you should get to him, he has some tankiness. He has again the shields from Alex, the ultimate. They won't be able to kill him. So let's talk about Diamond's build because as has been proven many times in the past, he literally rolls dice at the start of a game yep. and says, these are the items I'm going to pick, we'll see how it goes. He's 3 0 10 once again, and he is a monster. But it's very, very smart because he's so tanky. Again, with his shield from ultimate, when he engages, if he gets people to go on him, because he's so tanky, he has both armor, MR, he has some a good amount of health, and also he has some damage because of his AP and also his Hexdringer to provide some decent damage. So he's actually a threat they have to deal with, but he's also so hard to kill. They they don't really have a choice in going on him, but they won't even be able to kill him. So it's a very smart build overall. You could potentially go for something like a random to completely shut down Creaton's damage. Well, Creaton's ultimate may well be on the hunt, but it's Diamond that's looking for kills right now. And Creaton has to be careful he doesn't get caught Darian. out too far up the lane. Darian has a mana moon. Darian has a mana moon. <laughs> really, Darian? Really? <laughs> He just builds what he likes. That's that's what he goes with. And Alex Hitch now has found Creaton. Oh, that shield oh. just about saving him. No, nope. Alex Hitch got the kill. That was the extra damage from getting the Void stuff he didn't have before when he went in to try and kill Creaton. This time around, though, he just popped him. And now the Man Immune, Darian, he's going to go crazy on this turret. And he's going to go crazy, and that's going to be the turret going down. No problem there. He will get caught out. And the inhibitor will follow. No problem there from Gambit. 18 7 in kills. And Honestly, Gambit have looked dominant. This is a return of the old Gambit. You know, I wonder what it'd be like with a week off, and it seems that it just made them much stronger. They've been very, very strong. They got a great combo just for them, and now they're looking to close out this game. Well, Gambit may well going to be locking to finish this one out. Solar Flare going to go down. Not a lot going to be finishing from it. Darian just gets himself away. Look at the attack speed of Darian. He's got a buff from Alex Hitch, and they're just cleaving down the Nexus. They're going for KDA right now. They want to get themselves some kills. You can see just off of the side there, Eddie being focused out. He just had to tell the lights. Genji is down the side there. They're going to take the Nexus down. It will be Gambit closing out the match, taking down Millennium. And now week seven. Overall, such a strong game by Gambit. They had such a good combo. Yes, they got punished bot lane by the Leona and the same combo, but the rest of them, once they got to team fight, they simply punished Millennium every time they made a wrong move or picked the wrong fight. Got the kills they needed. And Alex on Lolo, he was such a big impact in the entire game. The swag lord sucking up the uh, crowd there. Waiting for the camera guy to get out of the way so he can uh, shake hands with the losers, which were Millennium this time around, but 8-1-6. Alex hit. Phenomenal. Again on Lulu. Absolutely fantastic game. He kept Kurt pressure down through his turret all the time. Kurt got some good farm on the swain, but the, just the fact Alex kept him down with the turret, and he could roam around whenever there was a fight. And we saw him in that very crucial dragon fight where Alina actually went with three people against three from uh, from the Gambit side. It was Alex who roamed down from mid, joined into the fight, picked up some kills, and that really helped Gambit get ahead and then just keep going from there. And Darian, he managed to get 74 bonus mana on his mana immune. <laughs> Not really worth. <laughs> Not really worth. <laughs> Not really worth, but it's just an item we picked up towards the end. <laughs> I want to also talk about what Kerb chose, of course. Yes. Coming into this game, they clearly had the plan. They knew they'd left Ludo open. They knew that Alexic would go for it because he said it himself in the interview. It's available. I will pick it. It is the strongest mid lane con considered so far by the uh, mid lane players. Went in with Swain. Came out 0 6 1. Didn't I'll quite work. I like the idea with the Swain because he felt he could go one versus one against Lulu and Lulu couldn't kill him. And the whole plan was get to the late game team fights and then Gambit wouldn't have the damage to actually take down the Swain. That was the whole idea behind it. But simply due to them losing team fights, losing the dragons, pretty much every single dragon was picked up by Gambit, meant that the entire team actually fell behind. And also meant that he couldn't get the core items he needs for the damage. He didn't have any death cap, there was no void stuff onto Swain, so he didn't have any damage to bring. It meant all the damage were actually on Creaton and Kevin. And Kevin, he could never really join the fights because he was either too squishy or already poked down a little bit. So he left it back to Creaton, who sadly didn't have enough damage. And you know, you've got to look at this game and you've got to look at the picks that Gambit had. And clearly, Millennium knew what they were leaving open. They left the Evelyn open for Diamond, the Lulu open uh, for Alex Itch. You know, the, uh, we got the Lucian combo with the Annie. Yes. There's a lot of great picks that Gambit got there. Millennium knew they were doing this, clearly in picks and bans, and tried to counter it and really didn't work in any of the lanes. No, but there's the thing again. If it had worked better for them, if Kurzon didn't fall so far behind early on, 
in the bot lane, actually also giving up a kill with the tippers from Edward. But if they managed to survive there, got in all the ganks actually did with Aranir, picked up the kills, they could have gotten the bot lane rolling, rotated that to Dragon, picked the Dragon up. And meanwhile, we saw Kevin top, he actually killed Darian one by one. He was more or less winning the lane. So it would have worked if they could manage to punish bot lane through ganks, Kevin winning by himself and then Crypt is farming mid lane. He could have gotten ahead early, could have more or less used this combo as saying, you're never going to kill any one of us. We have the on the hunt to engage, we have the owner to engage, and we just dictate the map. Again, it didn't work for him because Gambit managed to get the team fights and then get ahead. You say that Kevin worked well against them, but I'm not sure because we saw Darren, he roamed non-stop. And he, obviously that mid lane push, when he came in the mid lane, where was Kevin? He was taking red buff. Exactly. That is actually a very, very nice point. But that's not about the picks. It was just Kevin himself who actually mm. decided to stay top lane and just shove it out, even though he knew Darren was gone. He just stayed up there, Darren, he rotated down, ganked Kerb first time, then second time through the, between the two turrets, he was there again, Kim was still just pushing. That was a mistake, he should have reacted to this one, and also the rest of Millennium, after the bottling ganks, they should have moved around, got maybe into mid lane because they knew something, something was about to happen. And again, that's just kudos to Gambit though, for taking advantage of the fact they know the Millennium didn't rotate well enough on the map, and they did. So they took down even two mid turrets for it with the roam from Darian. Well, it seems that... Gambit are better off taking a week's break. And of course, that travel, we talked about it before, how it affects them. It seems to have worked wonders for them having that week away. We're going to step away for just a moment.